A very warm welcome to you. As always, it's a pleasure to have you join us on this edition of the program. As you know, we are your source for all the latest happenings in the world of business. My name is Margaret Mary Usiawa. On this edition of the program, we join Faith and her guests on the town hall as they examine penny insurance stocks and the pains of shareholders. While many believe that the difficult operating environment for businesses has affected insurance stocks, others feel that the insurance industry needs to do more to overcome its repetitional hurdles. Do take a listen. It is the responsibility of the insurance company to promote their business, to educate the people, to inform them, to provide very good service, excellent service. On this edition also, we will bring you highlights of the very colorful investiture ceremony of Mr. Shola Tinubu as 19th President and Chairman of Council of the Nigerian Council of Registered Insurance Brokers, NCRIB, which took place recently at the Landmark Event Center. Plus, of course, our quick fact segment and all the other extras. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the package. Details in just a moment. Please stay with us. Welcome to you. It's a pleasure to have you join us on the insurance industry town hall this week. My name is Faith Wadi. On the town hall, we pride ourselves as looking at issues that a lot of people will shy away from. Uh, we've taken a bold step this week to talk about what most people don't want to talk about, even though it's at the core of this business called insurance in Nigeria. That's talking about penny insurance stock and the pains of shareholders or investors. In our usual manner, we've gathered an array of tested personalities who are experts and have in-depth knowledge on the topic of discuss. I'd like to invite to join me on set Mr. Amos Falade, who is a dealing clerk and stockbroker in the Nigerian Stock Exchange. Mr. Falade was the group manager and CEO, Guardian Express Assurance from 2003 to 2008. He's an Associate Chartered Insurance Institute London and also an Associate Chartered Institute of Stockbrokers. Thank you so very much, sir, for joining us on the premium. Thank you very much. I'd also like to invite you to join me on set Mr. Moses Igbirode, who is the Publicity Secretary of the Independent Shareholders Association of Nigeria, ISEN. Mr. Igbirode is a friend of the house and a brother. Thank you so very much, Mr. Igbirode, for Thank joining us. Once again, uh, gentlemen, thank you for joining us on set. Performance of the uh, insurance stocks in the stock markets, uh, even from when when the boom era <laughs> has always remained at penny level when compared to to other sectors in the financial services industry. Um, what is responsible for that, and uh, how does it affect shareholders who have gone year on year? without getting dividends or getting even value for their investments. Let me start with you, Mr. Faladi. Okay, thank you very much. Um, by penny uh, stocks, you are referring to those uh, companies whose shares are trading around 50 Kobo. Yes. At present, on the Nigerian Stock Exchange, 26 insurance companies are listed under the insurance sector. Then there are two others who are listed under, under financial institutions. Uh, these two are listed under other financial institutions because in addition to insurance, they are into some other financial services. So on the whole, we are talking of 28 uh, companies. companies. Now, if you analyze these 28 companies, only one is trading above three naira. At present? Yes, okay. at present. Another one is trading above two naira. Two others are trading between one naira and one naira fifty kobo. 
Then about three or so are trading uh, between uh, 70 Kobo and one Naira. Mm -hmm. In which case, all the remaining ones yeah, are man. at 50 Kobo. So why is this so? It's not unlikely that what you are seeing is a picture of what is happening in the wider economy. Because insurance companies provide services for uh, all the participants in the economy, be it individuals, corporate entities, and, and even so government. on, and, and even government. Yeah. So what is happening in the economy is likely to be one of the causes. Then, if you analyze further, you will see that in the Nigerian environment, the level of patronage of insurance companies is actually very, very low, very, very low, compared with other uh, economies. The insurance industry can be divided strictly into two broad areas, general and life. If we analyze it further, you will see that the bulk of the business in insurance in Nigeria is on the general side. The level of penetration of insurance on the life side is very, very small. Very, very small. But, but okay, so Mr. Ferrande, is there a relationship between that and why their stocks are trading at, at, at um, less of, than 50%? Of course, there is a relationship. If the level of patronage is very low, it then means that the income they generate will be low, the, their profitability level will be affected, and of course, if you also look at the peculiarity of the Nigerian environment, the cost of operations, the cost of even managing their portfolios is so high that at the end of the day, they have little or nothing left in form of profit at the end of each trading year. So to some extent, what is happening is a reflection of what is uh, happening in the general uh, economy. Although Nigeria has a peculiarity of its own when it comes to insurance. Okay, I'm going to come back to you because you did mention now that um, it's probably a reflection of what is happening in the economy. And as I said in, in before, I, when I was asking the question, I said even when the economy was buoyant, so to speak, um, there wasn't really much in terms of the movement of insurance stock when you talk about majority of them who are listed on the Nigerian Stock Exchange. But I'm going to come back to you. Uh, Mr. Gude, I don't know. <laughs> I see you smiling at all of that. Do you completely agree with what Mr. Falade has said? Well, when you use the word completely agree, uh, uh, it's something like as um, it's part of it. It's not completely. It's not. Um, uh, first of all, outside of the economy, and the way he analyzes it, 28 insurance company, he analyzes one or two, and that is a fact. The analysis is a fact. But it's not completely about the economy. First of all, when you, the volume of shares in circulation is enormous, the sold shares with the volume of uh, shares, and the performance of the management to, to service those shares are so low, so there is no dividend uh, coming in. Majority of them, when they pay dividends, is uh, less than two copper, three copper, four copper. And uh, you, you when uh, who is going to buy those shares? <laughs> <laughs> then when you even have the shares and you offer them for sale, nobody is ready to buy them. So I uh, know it's not tradable. So they are not tradable. It's just only a few companies, as you already rightly said. And the, the one that you can even hardly, just one or two, when you place it into the market, it takes some time to, 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 to buy, uh, somebody will buy them. There are other ones you will put there, nobody will even touch them. <laughs> Why? Because there is no benefit in you that will come to you when you buy them. That is the fact of the matter. But then when you say uh, it's an economic thing, okay, I agree. One, the little one you are doing, what are you doing with it? 
Okay, that's a, that's a valid. Maybe Mr. Falade, you can you can okay. respond to what so, Mr. Falade okay. said. Okay, when I said it's a reflection of what is happening in the larger economy, you also s note that I talk of level of patronage, and I identified two areas of insurance. On the general side, the major consumers are the corporate entities and government. Manufacturers, importers, and so on. On the life side, the major consumers are employers of labor who have obligation to cover their liabilities. You know, in case employees die, the benefits that they are supposed to pay for uh, to the families of employees who die in service. But when we now talk of life insurance, compared with other countries, the level of patronage in Nigeria is less than 1%. As we talk, all the life offices in the country, they cannot boast of having 2 million people covering their lives. Why is that so in a population of, okay, let's, for the sake of, yes. <laughs> for the sake of, so, uh, <laughs> Mr. Nah, Wayne, nah, also, nah, in yes. a population of, let's say, let's not say 180 million people. Yes. Let's even say adult people who, who are able to buy yes. insurance. Yes. There are different uh, factors contributing. The insurance company as entity, they are not doing enough. And let me tell you, for example, the current practice, what you see, insurance, most of the insurance, when you go to, I'm not talking as a, co uh, a consumer, so, uh, I'm not talking as a shareholder in, in this way now. You see them that they will come to you, live insurance, um, live insurance, insure yourself. After doing it, make, you can, uh, can testify. If you put it on live uh, phone now, uh, people will call you and let you know. When you, they will sell it, you will key into it. After that person who sold it to you, uh, move on from the that uh, company. company you will not see them they will not call you again that is one they will just assume that uh, uh, it's not in a non-existent your money is gone and at the end of the day when you ask that oh, you have breached the contract yes the contract. <laughs> in, in, in life insurance is supposed to be a relationship a relationship in the sense that when you insure your life it's like that person uh, that company is the so is the main person closer to you that will always monitor your life, but always make sure that uh, anything happen to you, they, 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 are they, they, they find that. When, because you have collected one year or two years, you didn't show up, they will not declare that they uh, save some of the profit. That is one of the major problems. Then how will I, as a person that have experienced that, we key into it? So it's a reputational uh, uh, issue, a risk in the eyes of the, the, the insurance company. They are not doing enough. Because you are the one who developed the product. 1,000, 2,000, 10,000 contributed to us. Somebody have contributed. I have not only one, two, three people who are complaining about that. Even on my radio show, Mr. Faraday, on a weekly basis, these are some of the things you hear. Now, some people, some maybe agents or even marketers directly from insurance companies, they go out and market especially live products. People key into it. At the end of the day, if the, the marketer moves from that company, that's the end of it. The person won't see. They won't, they won't get any information as to what has happened to the policy they've keyed into. And it, it has actually uh, discouraged a lot of people from keying into insurance. I don't know. You are a life specialist. Yes, yes, so. yes. I agree with you. It's a problem. It is a problem. The question of after-sales service, service is a problem. But is not the whole of the problem. Part of the problem has to do with people's understanding of the needs for which they are buying the products. So when people don't have a good understanding, the level of patronage will be very low. So whose responsibility? Well, it is the responsibility of the insurance company to promote their business to educate the people, to inform them, to provide very good service, excellent service. If they are able to do this, and the level of patronage is very high, one thing about insurance is they have the opportunity of accumulating long-term funds.
Alright, welcome back. Many thanks for still staying tuned. Moving on now, we're bringing highlights of the investiture ceremony of Mr. Shola Tinubu as the 19th President and Chairman of Council of the NCRIB. The well-attended event was chaired by none other than the Doyen of Insurance, Olola Frederick Olabodi Ogunlano, and the investiture lecture was delivered by Mr. Babatinde Raji Fashola, the Honorable Minister of Power, Works and Housing. Enjoy it. The Nigerian Council of Registered Insurance Brokers, NCRIB, is a premier association of all registered insurance brokers licensed to operate in the Nigerian insurance market by the National Insurance Commission. Brokers, insurers, friends and well-wishers recently gathered at a landmark event center, Victoria Island, for the investiture ceremony of Mr. Shola Tinubu as the 19th President and Chairman of Council of the NCRIB. The very colorful event, which was attended by top dignitaries from within and outside the insurance industry, was chaired by the Doyen of Insurance, Olola Frederick Olabode Ogulano, OFR, while the guest speaker was the Honorable Minister of Power, Works and Housing, Mr. Papatudi Raji Fashola Sam. In his valedictory address, the immediate past president of the NCRIB, Mr. Manu Okunore, highlighted some of his modest achievements in office. Welcoming guests to the ceremony, the chairman of the occasion, Olola Olabodi Ogulano, said that the responsibility of office is more important for leaders who want to serve. The incoming president will assume leadership of NCRIB. In this respect, please permit me, good listeners, to call attention to two important features of leadership. These are power and responsibility. The first, which is visible, has to do with the grandeur of the office. The second, not so apparent, are the responsibilities of office. The latter is the more important. While the former is embraced fervently by all with joy, the latter is more often than not frequently neglected by many, except by those few zealous ones who generally wish to serve for the love of service. I shall not dwell on the many concomitants of leadership. As my remarks will be followed by the address on leadership by an erudite scholar who has also learned from experience. He will serve the main dish of this banquet. I will content myself with serving the appetizer in the hope that it will whet your appetite. In his goodwill message, the Deputy Commissioner for Insurance, Technical, who stood in for the Commissioner for Insurance, Mr. O.S. Thomas, said that the Commission has released a draft guidelines on new distribution channels to complement the efforts of brokers to grow the market. Insurance brokers are known globally as high-level experts in distribution of insurance products. But their efforts in Nigeria over the years are leaned extensively on corporate businesses. The Commission has released a special draft of additional distribution channels that will complement the efforts of the brokers. And I want to believe that we take advantage of this. The times are challenging and we must all turn a new lead in our approach to doing business. In the Nigerian financial sector, the insurance sector subsector is one of the most important entities that is operating far below capacity. We all need to work together to fill this gap and satisfy the consumer's expectation. Mr. Semiu Olushola Tinubu is an associate of both the Chartered Insurance Institute, London and Nigeria. He started the insurance broken career with Skip Nigeria and Company Limited in 1988 as an executive assistant too, from where he rose through the cadre to become the managing director and chief executive. Delivering the investiture lecture entitled, The Burden of Leadership in the Dares of Intellectual Depth, Insight and Sincerity, Mr. Fashel advised the new president of the NCRIB to be decisive and not look for cheap applause. First, let me start in this task by congratulating my brother, my friend, Semiu Ulushola Tinumbu for his elevation today 
as the 19th president of this council on the 19th day of October 2017. And you have heard why they chose 19. But as you and your council members assume office, please, I urge you to look for more integrity to add to what you already have. Like Professor Lusonya, I urge you to acquire as much knowledge about the affairs of the council and its members. You will need knowledge to convince yourself that you understand what you are managing. And more importantly, you will need it to persuade others to trust your decisions. Like Aliku Dangote, you must be ready to persevere when your intentions are misunderstood. And you must look for new options to solve difficult problems. Finally, please remember that you have now been called to lead. In doing so, please decide. Do not deter. In doing so, please do not look for cheap applause. Because leaders are servants. And always be ready to take decisions that are right even if they are not popular. With the speeches taken, friends and well-wishers witnessed the investiture of Mr. Olushola Tinubu as the 19th president of the NCRIB. On this note, it is my pleasure and privilege. Well, Dr. Waglaulikou <laughs> decorates the incoming president, Mr. Samuel Olushola Tinubu. In his acceptance speech, Mr. Tinubu highlighted eight major areas of focus during his tenure of office. The following eight points. <laughs> Constitute my thrust of office. With the first being that major thrust and others following but not in any order of priority. Number one, building the NCRIB into a strong institution through the empowerment of the secretariat so they can hold their own amongst all local and international professional associations. Two, in order to achieve the above, to prepare the Secretariat for that empowerment and reposition it with a seamless succession plan. Streamlining the duties and office of the President to essentially its core non-executive role. Introduction of value-added programs for the members, including ensuring affordable capacity building learning programs for members to take advantage of and in some instances even to offer free training to members. Mr. Tinubu has been involved with the NCRIB for more than 15 years, having served in various capacities actively. Reputed for integrity, honesty and loyalty by many professional colleagues, expectations are high. Many are however without doubt that as Mr. Lushola Tinubu takes the mantle of leadership as the 19th president and chairman of council of the NCRIB, good things will happen.
All right, that is our show for this week. Many thanks for being a part of it. Join us again next week for another fresh package. But in the meantime, feel free as always to connect with us on all our social media platforms. You can also visit our website at www.amonfinancereports.com for all the latest business news. Don't forget that this program also airs on BCOS Television Ibadan every Thursday at 6 p.m. Many thanks to all those who participated in the 2017 Insurance Consumers Forum. It was just amazing. God willing, next year will be even bigger and better. For those who couldn't and didn't make it this year, do watch this space for highlights on what went down that day. My name is Margaret Mary Osiobo. Many thanks for joining us this week. Enjoy this piggy commercial from Geico as our parting shots. Bye-bye. License and registration, please. What's this? Uh, it's my Geico Insurance ID card, sir. It's digital. Uh, pretty cool, right? Maybe. <laughs> you know why I pulled you over today? Because I'm a pig driving a convertible. Tail lights out. Fix it. Digital insurance ID cards. Just a click away with the Geico Mobile.